Hello, my name is Kevin Anikowski, and this episode is on intelligence. Let's begin with the two main types of intelligence, fluid and crystal intelligence. Where crystal intelligence is based in experience and facts, fluid intelligence is abstract reasoning and problem-solving ability partly dependent on crystal intelligence. The pioneering work on intelligence was done by Spearman, who named this G-force, which is the idea of a general intelligence. Experiments have shown that a certain level of mental capacity influences most aspects of human life and exams that you take even before a skill is gained in that specific area. Now, around the same time, Alfred Bennett created the first practical intelligence test and created then the notion of mental age. Note that majority of IQ tests today have an average score of 100 and the standard deviation is 15. I should also mention the emotional quotient test. This is called the EQ and was created by Goleman. And the goal of the EQ is to test your social skills in different areas, but you don't need to know these different areas. Just remember that it's EQ and social skills. Well, it's evident now that there's a debate whether there's multiple intelligence types. So next, let's discuss Sternberg's triarchic theory of intelligence, which postulated, as you expect, three intelligences. First, componential, aka the analytical intelligence. Next, experimental, aka the creative intelligence. And lastly, practical, aka the contextual intelligence. So these are low yield, but again, they're analytical, creative, and practical intelligence. Next, the more popular one is Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences, which, as you expected, had multiple intelligences, including visual, spatial, verbal, linguistic, and others that you shouldn't need to know. Later, he added another intelligence, a type of spiritual or existential intelligence, but the theory was originally considered to have eight intelligences. Quickly, let's discuss what role genetics has on intelligence. Over a century ago, Galton, the cousin of Darwin, suggested the notion of hereditary genius, claiming that nature played a greater role than nurture. Maybe that's why Darwin married his first cousin, you know, to keep the intelligence pool going, but uh, who knows. Now, in addition to Galton's hereditary genius, Bouchard had done studies of identical twins separated at birth and argued that environmental factors do not play as strong a role as genetics on intelligence. However, this can be disputed by the Flynn effect that we'll discuss in a minute. It has also been argued that the birth order is really important. Medium yield Adler birth order theory and lower yield is a junk confluence model each suggested that birth order affects intelligence. Adler stated that the firstborn is more intelligence, and this has actually been supported. The firstborn tends to have a very slight advantage. That would be the birth order theory. Now, the confluence model continues to say that firstborns are smarter than only children due to the tutor effect, which is that the firstborn is able to actually teach the siblings, and it may account for the birth order theory as well. So just like how teachers become smarter from a career in teaching, the elder sibling becomes smarter from teaching the younger siblings. Lastly, we need to address the rising intelligence. Although IQ remains constant at about 100, the IQ test is subject to constant revisions. If you were to take the same IQ test that your parents had, you would score somewhere around 20 to 30 points higher than what they scored. Essentially, that's almost two standard deviations away and you're considered a genius. But it's funny, if your parents took your test, they would actually score around 70 and been dubbed mentally challenged. So is this environment or genetics? Well, the gene pool is relatively stable, so this would have to be accounted for by environment. We call this the Flynn effect, discovered by none other than James Flynn. But hey, once you reach a certain age, it appears that your mental facets start failing you, soon you can't remember where you parked, let alone that your license was taken away five years ago and you can't even drive. Well, this is where the Weschler Adult Intelligence Scale, or WISE test, may come in handy. As an alternative to the Stanford Bennett IQ test that you commonly know, the WISE test is created based on complaints that one measure of general intelligence doesn't accurately depict strength and weaknesses, or even different ages. So the WISE test uses different sub-measures to test performance, not so much capacity, 
And as a result, it can be helpful to detect disabilities or onsets of neurological diseases based on certain failures in different subscales as you age. And that's it for this episode.